Programming can be a lot of fun when we build interesting activities with it. For example, in the Ybyte Python programming course available at www.ybyte.in, we build interesting activities, one of which is the shopping cart. Here, we make the students the owner of a bakery shop or whatever shop they like to do. User comes in, makes selection, for example, in this case says, you know, I want to purchase milkshakes, say four units, you know, let's say cupcake, maybe four units as well. And I want to check out. Now, at this point, we give our user an offer that, you know what, uh, instead of spending 607 that you are spending here, if you were to spend for, say, 1000 rupees, we will give you a 10% discount. Looks like a good offer. So user says, yes, I do want to take it. And, you know, we give those options to the user. User says, all right, I want to get one unit of milkshake. Let's say I want to get four units of milkshake. We add that and we make the final bill. Notice that from 607, the bill became 907. In a way, everybody feels good because from the user's point of view, yes, there was a discount. From the shopkeeper's point of view, the user spent more than what he would have otherwise spent. However, let's think about this carefully. Is this scheme always going to make users spend more than what he would have earned otherwise? Our present discount scheme is quite simple. What it does is that, you know, it basically looks at the next multiple of 500 and offers discount at that value. So for example, let's say present shopping cart value is 740. We are going to say, okay, look, you know, if you move to 1000 rupees, we give you a discount. Similarly, if the present shopping value is 7400, we just say, okay, we'll move to the next 500 and next multiple of 500 and give you a discount. However, the end result is quite different for these two, uh, you know, as I've also discussed elsewhere. In the example one, we go from 740 to say around 1000. Now at this point, when we offer discount of 10%, we come down to say 900, excluding tax. Now here, uh, as you know, the exact value at which you, at, at, uh, you know, attach discount may not be 1000 because we may not exactly go 1000, we may go higher than 1000, but still you get an idea. So final bill here is 900, the original value was 740. So the user certainly will spend more than what he would have spent otherwise. On the other hand, in the other example, we are start 7,400, 7, we go up a little bit to 7,500, but we offer 750 rupees as a discount, which means that if the user were to take this offer, then the shop is really getting less money. Uh, question is, can we somehow ensure that we are always in this situation? no matter what the you know uh, what the present shopping cart value is in fact that is the enhancement we'll talk about in this in this video um, the idea is very interesting we have two val variables that we control first the value at which we offer this discount now the question that comes up is why must it always be the next multiple of 500 in fact it can be higher too the next thing is the discount rate um, as you can imagine, the actual discount will increase when you increase the discount rate or the value at which we offer the discount. We can find the first multiple of 500 above the present value where the discount that the, the user will be offered is less than the extra expense that the user must do. And that will ensure that the shop always gets more money from the user. How do we do that? Well, we can do it in code using a while loop. So what we are really doing is that, you know, we are basically searching multiples of 500 higher than the present value. So remember grand total is the present value. Here we are just finding out what are the next multiples of 500 higher than this. And the moment this condition where the gap 500, which is the extra spend becomes more than the discount DCT, which is a discount notice. I can say I can abort my search and I'm done. Now we can use a, like I said, we can use a while loop here. KK here will be a counter variable, which is counting till the route right amount is found. Uh, let's see this in code. So notice presently I have a, you know, I, I'm just finding the next multiple. That's why this is one. But now we are going to convert this into a loop. So I'm just going to get my discount rate up here because I need this for calculation. So for example, let's say 10%. Uh, and I'm going to set the counter variable KK to one. Now I'm just going to create a flag here called say searching. Uh, I'll just explain this in a moment. Searching. Uh, I'm just going to make it true. So it's a Boolean, which is either true or false. I'm going to make it true because while searching, which means saying like, you know, I'm still not found the, the, you know, the right value. I am going to just bring this in here and put a tab so that this becomes a part of the while loop. Now notice here, I am going to find out for not one, but in fact, KK. Uh, so I find out the next 500, the, the gap 500. I also found the discount, which let's say I call by DCT that is given by next underscore 500, uh, you know, times DCT rate, 
by 100. Now, this is basically discount is given percentage. So I found out how much discount I'll give if my order value is the next 500. And like I said, if so, if gap, say gap 500 is greater than the, you know, is greater than the discount, then I can set searching equals to false. So, you know, I, I no longer uh, want to continue searching false else you know i can just keep incrementing kk so kk equals to kk plus one now notice that this loop is running while searching is true which means that the moment this condition happens then i'm going to break out of the loop because i would have found my right value for the next 500 which means that i really don't have to change anything else from this code pending now just to understand the working of this loop let's for briefly you know put let's say print you know we'll print here for example next 500 gap 500 and say dct as this iteration runs now when i run this code let's take some few examples for example here you know we first uh, do like a normal uh, let's say you know shopping so i say find you know find the checkout the very first next multiple of 500 gave me the condition that gap 500 became more than discount because gap 500 is like 312 from the present level whereas discount will be 100 rupees so yes i can indeed say i want to take this offer and i can finish this thing on the other hand let's take another example where we you know order let's say large amount of quantities so for example two for every item i go and order like lots and lots of them so i say 14 say 4 say i 15 and now let's say i quit this notice here this time round my bill was 4602 my next multiple of 500 was actually 5000 where this condition won't have worked because my discount would have been 500 but the extra spend would have been around 400 so my program went and picked up the next number which is 5500 and chose me a situation where discount is 550 but the extra spend is 897 and that's why it says if you purchase of 5500 you'll get a 10 percent discount if i say yes now everything else will keep working as same uh, because my ad quant will be accordingly you know adjusted um, uh, and the, hence the, the uh, suggestions will take care of the fact that I now must go above 5,500. Now let's say I say one is my preference. So it tells me that look, you know, your bill has gone above 5,500, so 5502, out of which I gave you 550 rupees discount, after which order value is 4,952. I hope you found this interesting. Do try this and let me know your feedback. If you think this way of learning programming is something that's interesting for you, do check out our website www.ybyte.in because there we learn Python programming through fun activities like this. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.